Hello everyone and welcome to Front Porch Chat with Randy and Friends. Coming to you today again from Florella. Glenda. Hi. Here we are. <laughs> it's stormy again outside. Well, Can you believe it's it? It's afternoon showers. You know, I wish it would rain every day though. It's just kind of spitting. It's not actually raining. Okay. It's not actually <laughs> raining. Uh, Tara Yeager. Can I please have the questions that we start every... Everybody, that's Tara Yeager. All you're going to see is her hands, though. <laughs> She's very pretty. She is beautiful. I said, I said we got to put like some tight pants on her and kind of walk I know. Maybe we'll get her in some hot pants and I get her agree. on the show. I agree. I say that. You know, as we start every show, folks, and by the way, go ahead and grab your drink Oof. and just go ahead and cheers. I need one. You know, you, Thank well, you. I know it's been a long week already, well, right? Well, it's hot. But uh, every time you see the little Betty icon come up in the corner of your screen, whether you're drinking coffee or a beer or like us, a glass of wine, go ahead and uh, cheers with us. But we're gonna get right into the questions, Glenda. Okay. So these are very, very important questions. I'm ready. A lot of very important things happening here, not just in Orlando, but in general, but this happens to be in Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> the vagina probes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, folks, uh, we have a community college here in uh, Central Florida, and it's come out that they are um, doing probes Students are probing each other during their, their classes, meaning that, let's assume you and I were in class <laughs> No, I do not want to have and this visual. One <laughs> <laughs> Can we please not have that visual? It's the truth. And I decide, as a fellow student, a male student, that I'm going to probe and take a look down there. That just okay, so that's what's right. going on. And there's a lawsuit going on. We yeah. actually happen to know, I'm not going to mention the attorney's name, but we happen to ha actually know the attorney for the defendants in right. this case. What are your thoughts about the fact that the vagina probes are happening here in Central Florida? Well, you know, first of all, <laughs> to me, it's just repulsive. I, I can't think of any other word. Um, you know, I, and I've seen a lot of comments where people are saying, this is very typical. This is something that happens in colleges. This is what happens in military schools. I don't, can't imagine being in a class with someone and the next day after probing their vagina, you I are mean, sitting next to them uh, taking a uh, test. Uh, listen, I'm going to tell you right now. I, I'm an open, honest kind of girl. I really am. Oh, folks. And I, <laughs> and I guarantee alone. you that I probably have been in crazy situations in my life. But I'm going to tell you one thing I would never consent to. I would never get up on a table, student or not, and let someone else probe me <laughs> for a grade <laughs> okay. or for any kind of performance that you're being graded on. There's no way, Randy. This is insane. This you know, is insane. on our show today, we have a special guest, Michael Cantone. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what he thinks about vagina probing. And was that, probing. was that question sponsored by any chance? That one particular was not. Oh. That was not a sponsor Oh, I thought question. we might have had a vagina cream or something. <laughs> Oh my, let's uh, go on to question number two. I think we, uh, yeah. and, and this is a funny one uh, as well. Not you know? as good as that one? <laughs> no, there's all these bicycles downtown. And by the way, this question is brought to you by Roger Scott, who is a criminal defense attorney here. And we're gonna show his phone number right here. Thank you, Roger, for always being a supporter of Front Porch Chat. Um, there's all these new bicycles downtown, um, orange bicycles. And uniquely, Orlando is known as a city that has some of the worst pedestrian traffic in the country. Um, moreover, we don't even really have that many bike trails. If you look at, right out here on good old Summerlin Avenue, you're not gonna find a bike trail. Most people who ride bikes downtown are gonna ride it on the sidewalks. What are your thoughts about the city making such a big deal about all these bicycles downtown that you can rent but there's no place to ride them. Well, that's just the way the city is. This city tends to do everything backwards. I'm not really How sure. Dare you? I don't think Buddy Dyer would appreciate well, that. Well, I'm just going to tell you. I mean, didn't you think about this before you started putting orange bikes out? It definitely is a cart before the horse. I mean, because I would think you need to have the pedestrian ways, including that of cycling, before you actually bought or brought all these bicycles in. Yeah. Yeah, what, and what how much was it? Well, how much was it? I just wanted to know. I don't know, but we're going to ask Michael Cantone. How I bet much? He knows how I would much love to know how much it costs for that mistake. Here's the funny part about the bikes. Where do you take it from? Let's say you get a bike at City Hall. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Drive it to the courthouse? <laughs> I mean, where, where do you take the bikes to? I want to know where the bikes go. I, I, me too. I, I don't know I where they go. There's no trails. There's no map. There's no real understanding of where they go. So you just kind of get in and listen That's to Mother that. Nature. That's Mother That's Nature. Me. She's telling us to go to the next question. That's the next question. I drove by the Citrus Bowl today. Hmm. Yes, I did. And first of all, I think it looks great. And I was pretty impressed with how it's branded on the outside. You know, I haven't been to an Orlando City soccer game Oh, you're yet. just admitting that I now? just admitted that. Yeah, wow. I haven't. Sad. Um, I plan to go eventually. Mm. Um, and you know, one of the big deals going on right now is the Citrus Bowl apparently can handle the idea of a, yeah. of a, a soccer game. 
And consistently, even you brought up in our off-camera discussion that the Citrus Bowl was pretty much packed to capacity even this last game. Yeah. Yeah. Which they won, by the way. Yeah. Which they is did. 4-0. That, that's, that's fantastic. Go Thank Kaka. God. We got, Go finally Kaka. got a, one, a win. Um, my question is, at this point, I also drove by the land where the new soccer stadium is going in. Mm -hmm. It's still dirt being pushed around. There's nothing really <laughs> happening. And we're $30 million, dollars, based on the fact that the Florida legislature left early, we're still $30 million shy. And that's not going to happen during a special session. So the question is, why not just go ahead and leave it at the Citrus Bowl? They've already, the mistake they made, in my opinion, was showing how wonderfully they could produce a game, in this case a show, mm -hmm. at the Citrus Bowl. Right. So if it's working, why even put it at the new stadium? Well, my question is, and I'm going to reflect back to a conversation we were having prior, is I remember when the red carpet was being put out um, for them to go over to the UCF, the East Orlando area. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know what that looked like. I don't know what the whole red carpet involved. But all I know is at some point, it was back to the city of Orlando. Well, you certainly I'd would not have know. driven people from Windermere or Apopka or whatever. They would not have driven to UCF. How do you know that? How do you know that? I don't know that. I should ask yeah. the ruckus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but no, I mean, the reality some, is I don't know yeah. that. What I'm guessing is that people would be more inclined to come to a central location. Yeah. Um, you know, even talking about camera. But what, but what were the with, negotiations? I mean, what was the talks behind the closed doors? Well, this is I what mean, I understand. And we're going to ask Michael Cantone yeah. about this as right. well. But as I understand it, the whole concept behind this new stadium, and again, I am just a layperson, folks, just like you. It has not been to a game. Just a guy with a Facebook page. I really have no clue. But... <laughs> I understand that the MLS regulations required us to build a stadium and, and the whole concept there is an intimacy with the fans, meaning that the players are closer to the fans, we have a smaller stadium, it's always filled, mm -hmm. that's the, the, the idea, um, and, and therefore there would be too much empty space, often like we see at Orlando Magic Games. <laughs> um, you know, since bam, there's bam. no Shaquille, we need Shaquille O'Neal back. <laughs> uh, with, without that, we just don't have that same situation. So I guess my question is, Glenda, um, maybe we didn't understand all the facts. Well, maybe that, again, city of Orlando, they're great at doing this. You know, they think it after the thought and then they already started. Bottom line is, I think the Citrus Bowl, in my opinion, it's a nice venue. And you went to the Open, I, right? I, I have. I've, opening, well, I've been yeah. to two games now. Oh. Um, the <laughs> bragging. You went to two games, everybody. Two I games. Don't, I don't tell everyone Good my whole you. Day. you went to two of games. Of course. Oh, and she also I, I, Look, I would have bought season tickets if I could have. Uh. The, the bottom line is, is that they, they did a nice job at the Citrus Bowl. It uh -huh. looks good. I right. mean, it really looks good. They changed the whole vending area. Um, everything's updated. I've only been to the monster truck jams there. I've well, that's scary. I you know. went to a monster. I went. Twice. Oh, wow. Yes, that in the uh, Drum Corps <laughs> International. I've been to that, too. That's very scary. Yeah, it's true. But no, it's honestly, it's very nice. So why not at this point? I mean, I don't know what they're going to do with the land that they're pushing over there. Maybe build affordable housing. There, maybe. Whoa, wow. That, maybe. Wait, let me get to question number four. Because that's, just, that's, that's too good of an idea. They're not going to go for that. Okay, Sunrel in its first year. It's failing. Um, what they expected it was going to do. And, you know, anytime you have something new, let's 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 be the instead of being negative, let's be positive for a second. First year, we probably should expect it's not going to necessarily be profitable. And I got to be honest with you, this city has not ever embraced. We don't even like Uber. Let alone, <laughs> let for alone, God's sakes, we no, don't even like let Uber. Let alone mass transit. But the question I have for you is because we don't you know, the weekend travel concept, the nighttime travel, and all those different yeah. things. If you go to New York City, if you go to LA, San Francisco, certain cities are really good, and, and people are good about embracing them. Yeah. It's not happening here, and for whatever reason, is it gonna take the I-4 expansion for people to actually embrace um, SunRail, you think? Well, I just think SunRail, again, we, we were not planned properly. You know, I think, you know, it goes to what, Delan, Deltona, and then it stops somewhere on the west side of Orlando. I mean, honestly, and it's very difficult to get to it. I mean, it's not like when I lived in Washington, D.C., like you would take the, the tram. I don't even remember the name of the metro. Right. You would go, you would be able to park your car in a very convenient area. It was very affordable. You jump in the metro. You went to Georgetown. You went to D.C. You went to Arlington. You went everywhere. I, I wonder if part of that is that we just don't have that uh, challenge 
We, we can get in a car. Right now, I can go and get in this car. I can get from one yeah, but side you of can do the, Yeah, but you could do the same thing in Washington, D.C. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, I could go from Alexandria to... Ar they uh, just accepted it. I, I think... Well, because it, it was easy. It was convenient. The problem is, I think, with a SunRail, it's not convenient for people. Right. How is it convenient when you're not even open on weekends? Yeah, that's a good I point. I mean, it's 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 not convenient. No. And I just think it's going to continue to fail, Last question before we go to break, Linda. City of Orlando Commissioner Regina Hill is defending for mm. code enforcement violations. Apparently, I mean, we're talking $22,000. And I want to find out how they even found out. I wonder if Michael Cantone can help us with that. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is, apparently, there was a car parked, and I think it's her son's, uh, parked in her driveway without a uh, plate on it. And they were charging her like $250 a day. Okay, did she get notified? Were they told? Well, I go back to the fact that she has this house that she bought back in the 90s, a five-bedroom, three-bath house for $67,000. That is a Mac that Daddy right house. There. Good for How her. How many square footage? Good for her. That? But um, the reality is I think now it's in foreclosure and there's some issues going on. But no, I understand no, no, it's being no, no, modified. No, no. I understand it's I've being heard modified. that it's been resolved. And you I'm of all people wouldn't understand modifications. Well, you know, because there's usually not a resolve. I'm just going to tell you in the foreclosure world. Explain it to us. Well, what happens is either the banks are going to come to some agreement, and getting a modification is not what people think. Right. It really depends on the investors, who's willing to modify, who's willing to put you under the HAMP program. I mean, I would really love to see the timeline on this because, quite frankly, I know the timeline. I know the timeline like the back of my hand. And I'm wondering whoever uncovered this information, how they found it, um, I hear they found it quite by accident. Quite by accident. Well, that can happen. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're bringing a special guest, someone that I wanted to have on the show since we pretty much started the, this program. His name is Michael Cantone. And what I like about Michael, uh, and sometimes don't like, you know, Michael and I don't always agree, right? Um, but he's got an amazing way of bringing information to you in a way that I think we're all going to benefit from. So in just a second, we'll be back on the front porch with Michael Cantone. You know, when I was a kid, we used to actually sit on the front porch. That was our social media of the day. We would sit there and talk to neighbors that would pass by, um, or, you know, the phone might ring. It was one of the kind you still used to have to dial. Today, I still have conversations on the front porch. Now we have our iPhones and our iPads, and often you'll see us drinking a Merlot or a Chardonnay. -nay. Whatever it's going to take to keep that conversation going. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Front Porch Chat with Randy and Friends. Glenda. Yes. We are joined on the porch by Michael Cantone. Thanks for the having me. The one and only. <laughs> the one and only. A lot of people have never seen you. They just have read my They've work. They've read yeah. your work. <laughs> you know, Michael is a, a uh, let me tell you how I, 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 everybody how I know Michael. Actually, in 2012, when I ran for political office, I met Michael. He was running for mayor at the time. I found him incredibly articulate. He knew all the issues, and he certainly scared people. And you left that race, and you came back, and you kind of just stayed in the process. And I want to talk to you today about... How did you get involved in being so connected politically? And I say that more from a perspective of journalism. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to ask you a couple of questions, Michael. <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, well, thanks for having me on the front porch, first of all. Um, but I've always been involved in politics uh, from the time I was a child, actually. I was working throughout high school and middle school, very active with my local city government in Virginia, where I grew up. And every step of the way, um, starting from my college education at St. Louis University, a Jesuit university, where service and community was really instilled upon us, and the importance of giving back and also holding accountable um, those that are the decision makers and the ones that can actually br break our power and bring people to the table. Um, so since then, that's just been a calling of mine. I, I genuinely enjoy other people. I try to make other people better. And I believe if everyone succeeds, everyone's going to get better. So why aren't oh, we focused wow. on he that? Oh, wow. just put on his pageant crown and <laughs> walked down the aisle. Yeah, but I love Tell that. us, the, a lot of people feel like you are constantly seeking out a story. So tell us how you feel about how people perceive the work that you're really doing. Because I see it, you know, we don't always agree. Oh, no. There's a lot of issues that we don't agree on. But I do believe you are incredibly well connected and you are very good at the fact finding. And that, ha that has to be a lot of work to go that goes into that. Well, thank you. And specific on the journalism front, I think one of the most important things is to focus on the facts and focus on truth. And I even just this uh, two weeks ago, I was invited to speak at a local leadership forum here in, in town. And one of the messages I put forward to everyone there was, if you speak truth, it's very hard for your opponents to twist that I or agree. to use it You're against you. very good you. at that. Let, let's speak on the that, truth. Very let's, cheers. Cheers to that. Very, I don't, that's why nobody, that's why everybody shuts down when you post something because 
There's no way to go back and say, is that true or is that not true? You're very good at that. Well, and I, I try specifically in regards to local issues to focus on public records. So something that's available to everyone in the community, something that we're entitled to as taxpayers. And again, something that our elected officials can't deny. This is proven fact, it's on the record. Please explain to us if you're an average consumer, you wanna know what's happening in city, county, or state government for that matter, how does it work? Yeah, it, it is a complicated process if you're just getting started, but we do live in the sunshine state, right? Here in the land of sunshine, that means we pride the ourselves. The city beautiful, yeah. folks. We pride the ourselves. The city beautiful. And we, we do everything do... backwards, but we're the city that's beautiful. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and that's how we have to turn that around from yeah. going backwards. And, and part of that process is that as taxpayers, we're entitled to check and balance our own elected officials and our own governments. It is different depending on the entity that you are requesting from. I clearly have had more difficulties with the city of Orlando than any other state, local, or government agency I've ever dealt with in regards really? to public records. What do you attribute that to? Because you ran for mayor? Uh, <laughs> that could be one part of it. I think politics, unfortunately, has crept into the city clerk's office. Uh, the city clerk is an appointed position here in Orlando, so the mayor makes the decision of who is city clerk, and city clerk, of course, is the custodian of all public records and the supervisor of local elections. So it's a very important role, and unfortunately, it's a little entangled right now with politics. Um, however, you have to remember when you're checking the people in power, mm -hmm. they're going to want to make sure they're protecting themselves and their interests. And that's where even this week I'm in, in negotiations in a way with the city of Orlando right now because they're trying to quote me nearly $500 for one records request. Okay, let, let's go back to this question, Michael, because Lindsay Community College mm -hmm. is here locally. We're talking about vagina probes, mm -hmm. okay? And I've, I've been trying to get you to do a story on yeah. this. I hope you do eventually, yeah. but are we just naive that this has been going on all along, that students uh, do work on other students? And um, what are your thoughts about that being here locally? How does that affect leadership at Valencia Community College? Is this gonna become an issue where we just basically put it aside? What are your thoughts? I think this is definitely a, a big problem that Valencia needs to address. And I think it's a larger problem. We've seen this in the national healthcare debate all the way down now here in Orlando at a college university. Um, but one thing I know is of all my friends who are nurses, and I have many who I went to school with, I do understand the peer-to-peer um, experimentation and practice. However, on very intimate and private procedures like this, there are methods. Yeah. They do have the equipment. How would you feel if you and Glenda were students? Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> no, that, that's just ridiculous. Earlier today, uh, Michael, I talked about the fact that the Citrus Bowl, and I know this oh, has yeah. been a passionate point. You and I, you know, two years ago, I didn't agree with you on this. No. You know and I know that they moved the, the soccer stadium from one block to another. Now we have all that land. I, I'm still curious what they're going to do with that land. But <laughs> They're moving dirt around, yet the, the, the fundamental truth is that the Citrus Bowl is working out for soccer games. Glenda, you've already acknowledged you've Citrus been Bowl too. is, and I think it's something many in our community are very proud of. I mean, and even I, when you turn on that TV and you see a full Citrus Bowl and you see Orlando in the spotlight, mm -hmm. that's what we pride ourselves on. That's what we want. Um, and, and I think that's one of the main problems of this debate is unfortunately the soccer team got tangled up in local politics. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they trusted the word of local officials like Mayor Dyer and thought that they would be taken care of throughout the process. Um, many like myself were not opposed to the soccer team. In fact, I played soccer my whole life. I, I love the sport. I yeah. love the game. It's Ooh, good for children. Uh, yeah. People don't know this. But the key is the way it went down, right. Right. the process, the closed doors, the fact that the community itself in Paramore was locked out from the start was the wrong decision here. And, and I think another Part of this equation was we had a mayor who was ready to build another very expensive public venue. So you had a perfect storm brewing. But I know you've brewing. done some research. Wasn't that part of the deal? This this new to venue. bring the team from from Texas. That was part of the deal that they would become an talk, MLS talk team. Talk about that. What do you now, mean bring the team from Texas? So the Orlando City soccer team, of course, started as the Aztecs in in Texas. Right. Um, they were with a plan to go to the major league soccer professional level. Um, that was not going to happen in Texas. They did not have the support locally to put more funding into a new stadium. And One, support is uh, attendance or support no, is support money? No, support is from the local government. Okay, so, okay. so they wanted a new stadium. And one of the reasons behind that is Major League Soccer has started a policy that any new expansion teams, because not current teams who are already in the league, they don't always play at s soccer stadiums only. 
um, but any new expansion team would have to come to the table with a soccer specific stadium. Um, I believe, especially here in Florida, one of the concerns might have been the fact that we did have several MLS teams come and go over right, the years, right, right. and they might have right. wanted to keep that intimate setting that we've heard PR-wise. Uh, well, no, 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 pause there, because <laughs> I heard that, and this is what we were told, is that was a requirement, that MLS said you must have no, this size stadium. It's not a requirement from MLS, because if you okay, actually... I'm, hold on, listen. Sparkly. <laughs> the, the, I, was, I, was under, I was under the impression that that was the, inti the intimacy of the player versus the audience and the size of that stadium were requirements. We had to build this stadium. Are you telling me that's not true? Before I answer, and I will answer, but let me ask one question. What was the setting in a sold out packed citrus bowl? It was like pretty 60, amazing, 60, pretty intense plus, and amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. You can create that setting and you don't need an 18,000 seat stadium or a 60,000 right. seat right. stadium to feel that passion, oh, yeah, that I energy. That. And here's the key. The key is the kind of stadium. Atlanta is gonna play in the NFL professional stadium. Yes, they're building a $1 billion stadium. So almost twice the price of what the citrus bowl will cost us when renovations are done. but there are several teams who play in NFL size stadiums. Right. So now let me, let me bring this back. Right. Break it down. Seahawks. Though. So but that's gonna, not true. We did not re need a stadium. Certain teams make deals with MLS oh. ownership and management to get into the league. It's different team to team. You've seen that in every agreement over the past yeah. year. But let me point out one more quick point that I don't think has reached the local narrative on this. Alan Johnson is the director of Orlando Venues. When Alan Johnson took over as or the venues director, he made a very conscious decision to start trimming from the bottom, the workers, the maintenance crews, the field crews, and, and stack on the top, the higher level. And you see that in the salary ranges. Many people in the venues department now make $80,000 or more. Um, wow. And, and, I've, been, and I've been told, Here, and I've been told by, and I've been. a pretty good promoter. Should I should be in that position. Doing that. <laughs> we all, we all that? wish, we all wish. Wow. Um, and I think one of the keys was Alan Johnson initially when he took over saw many problems at the Citrus Bowl. Many of us remember the Mud Bowl. It was a right. complete disaster. Right, 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 right. Alan Johnson um, does not have the background in sports management or stadiums. <laughs> That's not his background. So his background, he, he does not want to manage fields. He does not want to manage stadiums. He wants to be an Is that event like promoter. Kathy Ransberger doesn't know how to build a performing arts center? I think you're seeing a pattern. I think you're seeing a pattern. Oh, right? I think that you're seeing back. a pattern. Go ahead. Um, so Alan Johnson has a different view of the use of the Orlando venues moving forward. Right. And he doesn't want to be responsible for the maintenance. He also saw what happened when he was responsible. He was right. the one who selected the sod. He was the one that was directing the crews during the disaster. And there is an ongoing lawsuit right now. The city of Orlando is still being sued because of what happened at the Citrus Bowl years ago. Uh. And many don't realize that. So wow. I think there was many factors. The other key thing of a soccer- for? For the injury that happened on the turf uh. at the Citrus Bowl. It's a, by a player who played there. His career was ruined because wow. of the injury that took place and because it was directly related to the maintenance and sod of that of that field. Whoa. And, wow. and we, you know, as a soccer fan, soccer requires a different kind of pitch, Absolutely. a different field, sure. and the maintenance and, and the moving in and out of the Citrus right. Bowl would require a lot more full-time heavy maintenance. Wow. Um, the Mexico match coming in June, the city of Orlando will be bringing in an entirely new real grass field. They're gonna place that on top of the turf because international soccer rules it's require. Yeah, they well, require. Really? So, oh. so how much the, is that costing? Well, because we have uh, records requests Cup. pending. I, I've I've been yeah, quoted a large amount Cup for that. Here. We had the World Cup. I Get mean, some St. Augustine. Go to Home Depot. Just throw it down there. <laughs> well, tell Alan Johnson that and see, and I'm see kidding, what his I'm history kidding, is. I'm so I think there's a lot Great of factors there. Um, but another key is I, I think Buddy Dyer really wanted to focus on building public venues as part of his legacy and simply building a citrus bowl and and kind of cashing in everything in that isn't the big pop the as a what, fourth though? public but band. I, I agree what? with you. Okay, what, what's the purpose? It. I mean, yeah, it, so he goes that. away and he dies and we end up well, saying I think, he did this? I think Mayor Dyer, um, since since a few years ago has been focused on trying to bring major world events and or the Olympics to Orlando. And in order to do that, in fact, I have documents that Mayor Dyer and city, and city leaders flew to Salt Lake City years ago with the Chamber of Commerce and were told about modeling Orlando after Salt Lake. And it was right after Salt Lake had won the Olympics. They talked about light rail. They talked about building a new performing arts center. They talked about building so new think, venues. You but think what about there is Disney? a mass? But what about 
have Disney. You, you think there's a master so plan here that we're still not aware of? I agree. And, and here's the thing wow. about Disney. Orlando is the number one tourist destination in the world. You can't hold an Olympics because it's not like the Disney crowds, the Universal crowds are going to go away. They're still going to be traveling yeah. here. You need the additional capacity specifically for a city the size of Orlando to try to host events at this size. All right, hold You're on now to seeing that. the hold tennis. On. We need to take a quick yeah, break. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to explore this conversation just a little bit more with Michael Cantone. First of all, you're giving me a lot of information. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's really interesting. Uh, we'll be back in just a second on the front porch. Hi, I'm Randy Ross. First thing people should do, I would say, is start listening and shut up. Don't say black on black crime. We had this conversation. Everybody was like, whoa, <laughs> he's not a cop. What's up? The statistics are the statistics. I'm no stranger to politics, but I'm bringing it to you with a twist. Whenever you, you hear us say the word politics, go ahead and, and drop it. I ran for office, right? I lost. It's a fact. You know what? <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a <laughs> is it is perhaps a socioeconomic education level mm -hmm. issue? Well, they were coming here, you're talking about. It's about okay, people. Okay, we understand the issues. So what are we gonna do? We have to learn respect again. Fine, you greedy bastard. Here's it. your five bucks. That's a good one. It's on my And I will say cheers to that. Cheers. Politics, no yeah. Real people, real discussions, and cocktails every Sunday at 11. So you drink coffee every day? Yes. Do you put Jack yes, Daniels in it every time? Me, that gives me the boost I need. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hello everyone and welcome back to Front Porch Chat with Randy and Friends. We are joined on the porch today with our good friend Michael Cantone. Glinda? Yes. With her hat? Yeah, whatever. Get off my hat. The hat is just not <laughs> like a favorite. Thank I you, like Michael. You know, Michael, Thank as you. we went to break, one of the things that I think is important is a lot of people just, you know, there's just so much information. Can you kind of break it down and give us a better understanding of what this really means to everybody? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we see a lot of the buildings. We yes. see a lot of the results when it's done. and you kind of question, well, maybe it was worth it. But I think to break it down as simply as possible uh, is to start by saying 17% property tax increase. I spoke at that, but they I didn't mean, like it. Yeah. They didn't like me. They, they, didn't, they, they, won't. Didn't, they didn't appreciate what they, I said. They won't no. like that. And, and I think another thing is that Orlando's growing very quickly. It's a very good thing, but we all have to stop and think, how does one grow that fast? Yeah. The fact is um, many people are not aware of the $115 million of loans that this mayor has taken out to build these venues. That means this is not just debt that we pay this year. We are now in debt for the next 20 years. And to give you an idea. And why is that such a bad thing? I mean, people buy homes and they have 30 year loans on them. Why is it such a bad thing the mayor's doing that? It's not a bad thing if you have a plan and a fiscal path forward, right? Um, the fact here is we saw the plan. The plan was raise taxes on, on, right. on the residents. Right. And if you thought it was bad this year, in just a few years, one of those debt payments that you said, well, why is this so bad? Just one of those debt payments will be nearly $9 million due in one, in one time payment. It's going to be a lot for the city to keep finding $9 million, $2 million, $7 million. And then you think, uh, go back to that first question, where's the bike paths? Where's the sidewalk repairs? Yeah, These are all funds that can't be taken care of because our resources are. But spent look at elsewhere. the situation where they moved the stadium from one side of the street to the other, and how much money that cost. Where did that money come from? It came from debt. We will pay for that for the next twenty years. Um, often, what the, the mayor does here in Orlando is utilizes what's called an internal loan fund. It took me almost. I don't want to say how long. It took me weeks <laughs> to figure out. Years, folks. Just a, a few years. years. It took me a long time to figure out exactly what this internal loan fund was. But they basically loaned themselves money that they got from a loan. Um, so it's. I want to do that. It, it sounds great, right? Loan, Life yeah, would be money. so much easier. Um, loaned money, use, spending loaned money. And I think all of us know you wouldn't pay your credit card bill on another credit card and then pay that credit card with another well, there are credit card. Well, there are people that do that. that. There are people that do that. And we know what happens at the end of that yeah, path. Yeah. Yes. And you that's, I think, it's a dangerous slope. And that's bankrupt. a dangerous slope for yeah. Orlando. And especially at a yeah. time where, specifically in the Paramore community, we have horrible road conditions. We have um, a city that's constantly said we don't have the money to put security cameras in to provide more public safety. You see these excuses time well, you after often, time. Let's talk about Paramore because you often bring up Paramore as it's gentrified, gentrification. What do you say? 
uh, gentrifying. Like, yeah, you know, like putting them in a, in a kettle yeah, and frying yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, I don't get that. I don't yeah. understand that. Here's the reality of the situation. <laughs> what do you mean you don't understand it? They can come it. here and take this house any day they want this way, but they're not going to come this way. They're going to go that way. Well, so course. explain to us your interpretation of gentrification. Is it really occurring? Mm-hmm. Okay, well... Answer? <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, it definitely is. It definitely yeah, exactly. is occurring. And, and, and how explain. can you even ask that question? It's like, how many miles is Paramore? Uh, circumference? 1.4 miles. Thank 1. 4. You. Oh, what? I was right about that you last week right. on the show. You were right. I was right 1. about 4. something for a That 1. was a 4 great square trivia miles. question. Here's, here's the thing. It's 1.4 miles of people. That is small. And you're, and you're just trying to push them out because it's the highest in real estate? Come on. And, and let me Come remind on. you, this is also the poorest community in our One of the poorest, poorest communities. One of the most impoverished and unfortunately one of the most neglected over the past 10 years. Why? And Randy, you asked why I bring it up. When Mayor Dyer was first elected, in his acceptance speech, he said, judge me on what happens to Paramore. Now at the time, Residents thought he's finally going to deliver the promises of affordable housing. He's going to bring public safety. What we now see is a decade later, the plan was to gentrify, to well, rebuild, last week, and last redevelop. Show, we talked about the 57 homes or whatever mm-hmm. that are still mm-hmm. sitting vacant. One, one's built. Uh, maybe they can show that again. Yeah. They showed it last week. <laughs> one's built. So mm-hmm. Explain that to us, Michael. Explain us to us how did they do one house and do no more, and what, what do you really think that land's going to be used for? It's honestly hard to tell at this point. The fact is it might turn into housing, but who's housing? Is it going to be for <laughs> residents who are currently there? I doubt it. Let's take for an example, Creative Village. We've heard a lot about that. It's taking, it's, and, it's and part of this problem. And for people who don't even live here in Orlando, Creative Village is basically the idea of bringing high tech and the whole concept into downtown Kinda Orlando. Kind of like Celebration was Epcot. Well, it is. It well, really is. And it's, look it's, where it's, it is now. It was nothing to do with technology. Just yeah. for the Okay, well, yeah. okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, but <laughs> bottom line is Creative Village is our kind of like our um, Silicon Valley, if you will, right? <laughs> Is, well, that, is that it's, unfair? It's it's the dream. But that was the dream. It's the dream. Right, that's the dream. Um, okay. what, it, what it really is, is a million more square feet of commercial space, more luxury apartments. The average rent for a one-bedroom in Creative Village is estimated at about $1,500 wow. a month. Wow. Wow. Um, current rent right now in Paramore, just across the street from where Creative Village is planned, is around $300, $400 a month. Wow. Um, the Department of Housing and Urban Development says 30% of your income would qualify for affordable <laughs> housing. Clearly, the housing that's going to be built is not for the residents who live downtown right now. That, and I think that goes back is to it, your other discussion. It, the, yeah. the city needs, because of the debt we've taken on, the current residents don't make the bill. But they look, need to bring honest, in new Michael, hiring. Creative Village is not a bad idea. It's not necessarily a bad idea. Here's my problem with it. If you look at the contract specifically, it not only calls for more commercial development and more luxury housing, it does call for one third of it to be used for educational matters and some of the portions to be used for affordable housing. But if you look deep into the contract, which I have read it numerous times, I'm sure if you, you read have. the lines, after I'm a sure certain point, if affordable housing is no longer uh, affordable for the developer, after a certain number of years, mm-hmm. the developer does not have to build affordable housing. Right. He can build market rate housing. There you go. Affordable housing will never come to downtown Creative Village. There's always a clause. <laughs> and, <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> Bob Carr doesn't even make the cut. If you read the Creative Village well, contract, not, you know, Bob I, Carr I, is going down as well. Is Bob Carr. Is I'm not saying it has to stay or go, but again, these are conversations that are not happening with the community itself. Yeah, it, it is. That's time to change. I am really tired of the fact that we get this information when it's been too but late. But you know, is it like what Michael? Do you do Michael, at this you know, because I was uh, when I went to the tax meeting, I, I I heard from a commissioner after I spoke and. They basically told me, uh, where were you when all the conversations were going on? Mm-hmm. Are these conversations really going on? Am I being alerted? It, no. As I live here, let's assume I, I didn't have this little show and I didn't have a little Facebook page and all this stuff. <laughs> How would I know these conversations were happening? How would I know to engage? You, you don't. And that's part of and the And they setup. want me to do that, right? Of course. I've gone to City Hall numerous times, in fact, this month already for meetings between commissioners, for meetings that were agended. You'll often find in City Hall, those meetings are either canceled last minute or when they see you there, uh, something's come up. We have to reschedule. Uh, They don't want the public prying in on these conversations. And remember, Orlando's a strong arm mayor setup. 
So these commissioners don't want to jeopardize that little hundred thousand dollar expense account that they get to spend because the mayor's been known in the past. Patty what Sheehan said it herself. What? He's taking that money wait away. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, wait. On. Hold on. Stop the presses. <laughs> Where's the pizza? Where's Terry Yeager and her hands and all that? Hundred thousand dollars for what? They have discretionary funds. They can spend right. these funds on their districts. Many commissioners would choose to spend those in different ways. Um, I'm actually starting that analysis right now. Uh, I looked first at the six months last year, ending the year, and I'm waiting for records now for the current six months, of course. So let's say when I get elected, if, if I were, let's say Glenda gets elected. Well, I'm just I gonna use me, elected, I'm a bad example. Frankly, if Glenda gets elected, <laughs> if Glenda was a city commissioner, the one of the first things she gets is a credit card or a checking account where she has $100,000 to spend on whatever she wants. Mm -hmm. And she out, out the gate. Does, she, get, the does gate? she have out to seek gate. approval for that? Or The commissioners are the approval. So the commissioners so are in charge of their own. So they, they no. get to tell each other it's okay to do what you're doing. Uh, for instance, just to give you an idea of some of the expenses I've already seen looking through some records, um, donations in the commissioner's name to local nonprofits or charity groups. So, so let's say I want to sponsor a walk. I get to write you a check, and I look like I done a great you thing. Could. You very well could. Now, do now most but elected it's not officials. It's coming from that district, though. It's coming from that commissioner. Can so I write? Well, it's like, coming from the commission's, from the district's. Can budget. I write a check yeah. into a, a, a district that's not mine? Um, some commissioners have used funds for joint projects. They'll, they'll decide how to spend those. Some commissioners even have shared aids in the past. Um, as, as they've taken on a second aid each, uh, specifically well, I don't know if I would Commissioner Regina Ings Hills. or Regina Hill. They had <laughs> a shared aid. Drunk and beats not her. Not, not her. her. <laughs> I think because of the situation, what well, happened? I'm sorry. Isn't that isn't that one of the aids? <laughs> it, it was. Okay. It is. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Why? Um, we have other questions we have to ask, <laughs> yeah. Michael. Yeah. No, that's very interesting. Yeah. So they have a hundred thousand. So to give you some other ideas, they buy their dinners. Some of them. I've seen forty, fifty dollar entree dinners. I've seen Capital Ale House. Wait, 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 wait. So they, they buy dinners for who? For themselves. For themselves. So, Michael, what I want to do now, though, is kind of step away from, you know, we've talked a lot about a lot of different issues. We know there's so much going on oh, yeah. in our city, and I think we both love our city. Or we wouldn't, give, we exactly. wouldn't care. Exactly. We wouldn't even talk about it. So, Michael, talk to us about what do you see the resolve being? How do we make it a better place to live, work, and play? Yeah, I think Orlando's already on that path. I mean, honestly, that was, like I said, one of the driving forces why I thought something radically different had to happen, another narrative had to be offered. And honestly, in the years before I ran, I didn't see much of that. You saw it from few select candidates. Right. Now I think what you're seeing is a different attitude around town. People are thirsty for this knowledge, which is different. They're ready to hold officials accountable, not just here locally, at the national, state level. This is a difference uh, of overall opinion and attitude that's happening with we'll voters. We'll call it a paradigm shift. Well, do you, a paradigm do you feel shift like a paradigm is, shift. And that came up at the leadership forum. There you go. Uh, what's necessary here is a paradigm shift, is bringing people to the table, mm -hmm. making that table a little bit bigger, a few more chairs there, more voices, more conversation, and again, more transparency. Mm -hmm. With that, those are the building blocks of success right. for any, any endeavor moving forward. And it's something you, we haven't seen. Do you seen. feel like that Currently, that it's the transparency issue is our biggest problem. What's our biggest challenge? And I, I think transparency hits at it because, again, if there is a larger vision that we all just can't see yet, that's part I mean, of the problem. I mean, is it literally somebody sitting around and just plugging in what this looks <laughs> like? Well, no, I think it's, it's, it's business arrangements. I think it's years of donors and supporters and the mayor's work in politics. He was in the legislature before this. He has a long history with this community. Right. Um, and with, specifically with developers, with the businesses. Um, I think... The difference is something's got to give, sure. right? It's not working. So people are now feeling at that level that they weren't feeling it five years well, ago. I, 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 and our know, property I'm taxes were one big you. thing yeah. that's, I, that sparked I, I, that. I am, I am really disappointed. I think that's what's... And you and I, like, like I said, we were not always on the same page. And I'm no. starting to kind of see what you were doing. Yeah. I, I'm starting and, to and, hear it. And that's been my challenge. And, and look, like you said, it's not easy. And it's not necessarily fun all the no, time. No, no, you're called a conspiracy theorist. I'm that's sure. Why you're no, you are. I'm sure. You are. Sure. No, but I mean, sure. that's what you're called because sure. nobody wants to hear like your thoughts and what you see in the future. You don't want to accept it on some level. You don't want to level. think that far ahead. And you know what really, it's going to yeah. take? I think it's going to take the younger generation. There's that younger generation that is in the middle. I call them the grassroots kids because they're mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. they're hungry. They want mm -hmm. things to change. Everybody thinks they're out doing crazy things and they mm -hmm. don't care. I disagree, and I think that's where people are missing the boat. Yeah. These kids are smart. Oh yeah, they're technically inclined. They're they they communicate well, even though people think they all they do is text. 
I gotta tell you, I think that's what's missing. So I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna say they're aware. They know what's happening. I'm gonna say enough. some venues, and I want to get this one word. Okay. okay. All right. Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center. Oof. <laughs> another that's show. my word. Uh, yet that's to be seen. That's another show. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole nother show. <laughs> the uh, uh, good luck. <laughs> Amway Center. Not not needed the way it was. Not cool. needed. Uh, well, you can give a couple yeah. words. It's okay. The new magic. Um, uh, the Creative new, Village. The cre is no, the new magic, the magic oh. entertainment complex. entertainment complex. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. Uh, Creative Village. Wrong direction. Wrong direction. Um, geez. Soccer stadium. <laughs> wrong location. Good idea. Wrong location. What's going to happen with where the, uh, the soccer stadium originally was planned for? What do you think? Uh, in Paramore? Yeah, Paramore. I think uh, the original spot where the church is? Yes. Uh, nothing's going to happen there unless they develop the future entertainment area entrance way for the soccer stadium. Because If you stuck. look at city Isn't plans. The, mission, the rescue mission stuck, right? It's not the, it's not the mission. I'm talking about the mission. It's not the mission. Oh, the Faith, oh, Deliverance, the Faith mission. Deliverance Temple, uh, which of course held out through the oh, eminent oh, domain oh, process. Can we talk about that just, just oh, for a second? Oh, no, you think, we are not going to talk Michael, about the people should've... that gave up the money. Shut don't you well, think they should have just taken... I don't. I worked no. very closely with the pastor, with many members of that church. I heard the stories directly from them. How much was enough? How much would it have really taken? It now was that it's not, all, it was not about the money. It's first of all, you're never going to get through this. Nobody, nobody, and I'm not gonna, nobody, nobody I'm not watches try. this show. It doesn't matter. No, I'm not going to try. Much, <laughs> how much, not about the how money. much would it have really have taken to close the deal? Randy, here's the thing. The pastor's family Answer made the it question. clear. There was no price. There was no price. The fact you're was, you don't like the that. fact was, Mayor Dyer, in oh, fact. Oh, so you're saying that if they'd offered $20 million, they wouldn't have taken it? It yeah. wasn't about the money. Stop in fact, it. Mayor Dyer never met with oh, the leaders so of the church. Silly, he wouldn't even meet with them. The fact is, they have a community to serve. You can't ask a, a church that's focused in a community for th three decades. Oh, my goodness. To but why couldn't they just move someplace near there and take this money and it just was... build something even more amazing? Uh, whatever they say they've goes. They've been going through this for years, That's how Randy. It is. They, they have the Amway Arena. Now they've got the Orlando City Soccer. I mean, they're trying to get rid of that community. It's a high-end real estate. I don't think that's a strategic decision. Okay. I don't think they're trying right. to get rid of it. It's cheaper to come that way than it is to go this Randy, way. Really? Really? Randy, you mentioned, but you mentioned strategic. Really? Randy, oh strategic. <laughs> I would question the strategy. I think wow. it's possible. I think it's I'm going to take my like, tablet like, and I, just smack it over I your head. I dare you with that. Oh, of that. Let, me, let me just go on Facebook. Go ahead. Seriously. Just go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Michael. Go ahead. What are you going to no, say? No, no, no. I mean, go on. No, no, I, no, 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 no. Yeah, go ahead. We do this all the time. Uh, See, you've lost your I've lost, lost my train of thought with that one. Yeah, I, I, I have no <laughs> idea where that one was is. going, Glenda. <laughs> so we talked pretty much about everything we talked about so far. So we're ready kind of to wrap it up with Michael. I don't know. You know what? I, I got to tell you, from someone who is a newly voter, oh, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I've only voted, what, year as I've been registered? As a libertarian. Let me tell you something. I, I really appreciate the fact that you come forward, mm -hmm. and I, I watch everything you do, because the one thing that I have learned in dealing with banks and foreclosures mm -hmm. is knowing that there is a sinister side of society. A lot of times you don't want to think that, mm -hmm. but it's there. Uh -huh. And what I do like about what you do is that you bring a lot to the table. You bring a lot of facts. You actually bring a lot of things that I don't think most people would bring oh, to the table. You. So yeah. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. And I think that you do a lot, and I hope to see in the future that you do more. Hopefully. And you keep us all. Why are you looking at me I like just, that? I mean, she's just sitting there, just stroking your well, ego. I, I, well, I, oh, no. I, I think you know it's what? fine. It's, it's the absolute truth. I mean, this guy puts out an article, and what are you going to do? Argue him? You can't. You can't argue you can't, with Michael. You can't, you can't debate can't. him. I want to. Sometimes I, hope, yeah. I want the debate. That's why yeah. I write. You, I write yeah, to start the discussion. You don't so make it factual. easy. No. You make. You well. don't make it easy. By the time you actually put something out in the universe. It's, it's too late. there. It's too late. We can't. I try to tie my it. my ends yeah. definitely. So and, and and do we get the news story that's coming around the corner? Or? No. Oh, tell us oh. a news story. Well, there's Give us a hint there's a few okay. stories on the line. Clearly, commissioner expenses will be a big one. Okay, um, we also to that. have uh, more information about all the money that we recently spent on the Citrus Bowl renovations and some of the shortfalls and pitfalls well, that we're seeing. I'm sure I heard something there. about an air conditioning system that fell. we've had broken air conditioning. We've had uh, non-working advertising signs. The technical element we've wow. seen the lack of Wi-Fi. But we're in the high-tech corridor. That's we're a high-tech city. We're a high-tech city. <laughs> yeah, we're Seattle. But, uh, we're we're, we're Seattle. struggling. We are. So 
So I just don't want to see Orlando grow too large where we then set ourselves up to fall and fall yeah. flat on our face. Yeah. There's smart ways to grow. There's smart ways to incorporate so, and, and everybody. Let me clarify something. You're not against growth. No. You're just against smart growth. Yeah, smart Pragmatic growth. growth. Right. Yeah. And it might be a good time for us to slow growth down a little bit. Yeah. Look around. Maybe not. It might be. Might be a great um, platform for know, somebody in the it, future. It, it, and I think key, key in that is progress has to be coupled with protection, right? <laughs> we can't She's just move on and leave everything that we have now I behind. Agree. All right, everybody. Well, <laughs> we have been on the front porch today with Michael Cantone. He is a advocate, activist, advocate, advocate. blogger, writer. You know, I asked Michael uh, earlier today, I said, you know, Michael, where did you get all of your training? How did you decide you're going to do this? Um, and he was like, you know, Randy, I just kind of went out of, I, you were a writer in college. In high school and college. In high school yeah. and college. And you just kind of explored it. And I, I got to be honest with you, I give you total kudos. I mean, we don't always agree, but I'm very impressed with how you get your information together. Well, and I hope people remember that, that in this show's doing just that on video. Yeah. Right. We need to have discussions, right? What's changing Orlando? What's leading to better things? It's discussion. It's talking to each other again. It's having these dialogues. Getting on and the you porch. do it on the Getting porch. Getting on, on the porch. porch. So whether Come you're on. online, on the porch, I hope no one gets offended. Let's use these opportunities to talk, right? You know, I don't think that's you did. I, I don't, personally don't think you said anything today that's going to offend anybody in any, in any particular. I mean, yeah, we talked I think that it's, it's, it's critical. It's important. Um, and I appreciate yeah, what you. you do for the thank community, you. I do. And with that said, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back here with Betty on the porch. It's always fun when Betty comes <laughs> in on the porch. Uh, Michael, thank you again. Yeah, thanks again. We appreciate it. Great. it. Thanks. We'll see you soon. Cheers. 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 <laughs> I want to send a special thank you to Trend Studios, especially Matthew Bingston. You know, uh, he is the hairdresser to the stars, everybody. He does my locks. But the reality is Matthew is a great guy, great hairdresser, um, and we appreciate Trend Studios being one of our sponsors. Uh, the phone number to give Matthew a call to schedule an appointment is right below um, my face, probably right here, someplace like right here. And so give Matthew a call and support Trend Studios because we appreciate their support here on the front porch. Hello everyone and welcome back to Front Porch Chat with Randy and Friends. We are inside uh, tonight on the front porch. This is the old front porch of Flor Florella. Uh, we're here because it's threatening weather again. I mean, this is Florida. Yeah. It's going to be threatening weather. I think we ought to think about a change of location. No, we need to find porches. We need to and find you know porches. What? That are enclosed. And, that are enclosed. That's yeah. a great idea. Enclosed. Enclosed. Well, somebody front, else thought Which are really that, sun porches, but um, just uh, email me at www.frontporchchatwithrandy dot at uh, gmail.com or on our we our Facebook page uh, Front Porch Chat with Randy and Friends. Glinda, very yes. interesting conversation with Michael Cantone. He's very interesting. He is and I've always thought he was interesting. You know, even when I didn't agree with him, I yeah. thought it was interesting. Yeah. Betty, you had an opportunity. We have Betty. Betty yeah. Hello, Hello, Hello everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um Betty, he talked about a very number of interesting things. Were you listening off camera? Yes. Okay. What do you think about, let's just let's talk simple first. What do you think about those bicycles that they have in downtown Orlando? I'm sure you've seen that on the news. We, we have horrible transportation for bicycles. What do you think about that? Well, I do think it's bad because of the fact that uh, you're supposed to ride a bicycle in the street, right? That is in correct. A lot of people don't realize Orlando. that. You're not supposed to ride a bike on the a sidewalk. You're That's supposed right. to ride in the street. That's right. Mm -hmm. But it's nice when they have a bicycle lane for you to do so, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And people, the motorists have, have to take more time. Yeah, but that's why everybody gets too. hit and but killed. But the fact is that I think I went outside one day here. <laughs> and forgot to do the right, left, to whatever. Oh, the hand signal? And I, no, no, just to get no, out. No, just to get the out. She almost got hit. Oh. Okay. <laughs> just to get hey, all right. in the back almost died for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's no lie. That's no lie. All right, Mom. I have a very, very, very serious issue to ask you about. Oh, I put my glasses on for it, everybody. Um, I thought that was serious. Vagina probes. Oh, I heard that part. <laughs> it's not funny. There's a lawsuit, Betty, pending against Valencia Community College, one of the top community colleges in the, in the country. I don't know anymore. They may have lost Well, I don't know. You'll have to ask their board of directors how they feel about 
you know, vagina probes. Like, b- 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 vagina probes, but <laughs> I didn't even realize that happened. No, I can't now, really I, I will I say that I knew that people were, you know, they have, there's cad- cadavers uh-huh. and things like that. What do you think, Betty? If what you were in class, what do you keep saying cadavers? Are you talking about animals? No, cadavers. Do you know what a cadaver is? It's a it's a body that's been like embalmed, etc. And you can work on oh. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought. It was yeah, that animal. hat's not working for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working at all. All right. So Back here's the thing, Betty. Betty, Betty, here's the thing. So here's the reality. So let's assume you're in class with someone. You and I are in class uh-huh. together. Well, you can't do that. Your son and son. Wow. And, oh, you and Glenda are in class together. Yeah, there we go. Whoa. And all of a sudden, you're asked to probe her vagina. I wouldn't like that. <laughs> but I don't want her doing the same to mine. Isn't it weird? It, no, but I let me ask you, it wouldn't be so bad, I, I think. I don't think that should happen. Yeah, and I think if it was a stranger you never saw again and it just came and went, nobody would care. I think yeah. the concept yeah. of sitting in the classroom environment um, and having mm-hmm. that happen, I think, is right. a big deal. It is. Right. It's a huge deal. I mean, you, you go to yes. school with them. You're in class with them. Mm-hmm. You may even go out with them. I mean, some people are friends with students. I mean, <laughs> and they're talking about your vagina. I, I mean, it's it's it's. What a if they don't like much. your vagina? Well, what if it's ugly? And what if they like start saying it's like terribly looking or? You know, what what happened? Meet outside what? class. Dude, no, there's a lot of bullies out, out there. There's really a lot of bullies. I don't, out there. I don't even know how to I talk don't about this without. Laughing, and it's not funny. It's not a funny subject. There are yeah. students no, that were literally to forced learn, to do right? this. Yeah. This is a big they deal. Have, yeah. they do Can you imagine leaving? It, let's say you're going to school to be a nurse or, or whatever you're going right. to school for, right. and you are forced to do this, and now yeah. you feel no, you feel an obligation to leave the program because your educator is telling you if you don't do this, you're gonna yeah, you're gonna right. be. You have no grades, you or you don't, don't yeah, pass, you don't or whatever. Do, no one and wants and to do only that. that, there was also, again, I mentioned earlier, there were sexual innuendos that went with this like it was kind of a game. Right. If, if that's true, if that's what this instructor really said, you know, some of the things that he or she, I don't even still know right now if it's a he or she, but supposedly right. there was some very explicit sexual conversation going right. on. You right. know, and, and, you know, look, I'm going to tell you right now, if I had a daughter and that daughter came home to me, and was in tears, distraught, this is what happened to me, I'm going to tell you something. Valencia Community College would know about it. because Well, that's why there's a lawsuit. Well, exactly. Uh, so, Betty, um, yes. Citrus Bowl. I agree. Now, I know you've not gone to an Orlando City soccer game, and yes. I'm not sure that it's your thing, but I think you watch what's happening on the news. You're a very big news person. Right. What do you think about, does Orlando City soccer need a new stadium based on what you know as a lay person? person that just watches the news, sees it all going out there, do they need a new stadium or should they just stay in Citrus Bowl? Are you, are you well, really drinking? I gotta reach, I gotta reach. How <laughs> come I don't have a drink? I know, where's I know. your, well you're drinking that already. Anyway, yeah. I think, uh, I think if that was part of the deal, and when they negotiated the soccer coming to Orlando or not, and so forth, I don't know all that, but, cause I don't know everything. I almost everything, but not yeah. everything. Uh, but I do think that if it was part of the agreement, that would be one way to look at it, that they should, you know. And I think that's a very stadium. valid point. That, that is a very if valid point. If it was the agreement. Right. If that is how we got exactly. the MLS state, the MLS status mm-hmm. to begin with, then we, you know what? We need to follow through on yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I get so. that it's working, and I great. I I, yeah. I gotta applaud whoever in the city of Orlando turned that Citrus Bowl into the perfect soccer stadium. That but the reality true. was that wasn't the deal. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that's and that, the deal. That's, you gotta follow through on the it, deal. It absolutely is. And and you know, I know we all sit here and talk about what MLS is or it isn't. You know, what? The bottom line is, like I said, when they were asked to go out to the east side of Orlando. They were given the red carpet treatment. This is what we're going to do for you. We're going to make this the most outstanding soccer stadium you've ever seen in your life. Then all of a sudden the brakes were put on. What are those brakes? What was the discussion about MLS? Uh, I mean, that's what I can tell you. I I think the idea was that we wanted everything downtown. Even when I was at my prior employer, they they said that we were near downtown. I was literally a mile from downtown. Downtown, there, there is a focus right now to create I a downtown. I get it, I get right. it, but whatever that agreement was, then that right. agreement has to move mm-hmm. forward, just like yeah. your mom's saying. If I that was the original that. agreement, it, whatever the excuses are or not, you follow through. Yes. That's right. <laughs> right, Mom, and, Betty. And oh, oh, oh there goes my glasses. Yeah, too We're much. not feeling about something until it's 
Well, I think that's All a very in the back. Right. Going to be this way and not that other way. They're not really seeking public opinion, no. are they, Betty? They're yeah, not really seeking exactly. public feedback. Exactly. exactly. They want us just to agree to whatever that is, that is happening. We call that sheeple. Okay, Betty. <laughs> we've not been on. You've not been on Sun Sunrail yet, have you? Sunrail. The the train. The train. <laughs> the what? No. No. No, but, but I, what do you I think about it? What do you think about Sunrail? Well, it I wouldn't think be it's something good. you you think it's good. I think it's something that yes, I think we need it. Yeah. There's a lot of people who like it. And I in your this discussion a while ago, they do want it on the weekend. All right, Betty, any last minute thoughts about what Michael Cantone had to say today? He brought us a lot of information. He is very knowledgeable. I enjoy hearing him speak. He knows a lot about a lot of things. He's articulate. And he really he is. is. Very articulate. Yeah. Can't say the word. Okay? <laughs> <But> <laughs> and she's not even drinking. No. <laughs> partial plate. Partial plate. Yeah. Oh, it's a partial okay. plate. Yeah. So anyway, I did enjoy his speech today. He speaks very well. You know what I applaud about him um, as we wrap this up is he came out of an election that he didn't win. Mm -hmm. He didn't even perform very well. He was like me. We just, it was a horrible turnout. You know what it was. It is what it is. But he found a way to keep that vision going, mm -hmm. that conversation yep. going. And guess what? He's far more powerful right now than he'll ever be if he runs for public office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people look mm -hmm. up to him. Yeah. You know what I was just telling him? I said, you I know, do. I told him, I said, I think what you should do is do kind of a website where it's a one-stop shop where people like me mm -hmm. who really appreciate the knowledge that he has, where how do you get those records? How do you look at those public records? And if I could just go to one place and kind of click on and I could see mm -hmm. like, oh, they spent $50,000 on this. I mean, exactly. that would let me get educated like him, but easy way to find it. Right. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. And right. I said to him, I said, do something like that because I would be on there all the time. If I was really interested to find out where it's all going and right. how do you do it, why not have something like that? Right. And why not? I think that's exactly. powerful. And Very I, powerful. I, I think that as we wrap the show up today, you know, wish there were more Michael Cantones Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. He, he does something that most people are afraid to do. Mm -hmm. he, he questions the status quo. He researches. He knows how to... Gets facts. Gets facts. And you can't, you can't yeah, deny yeah. what he does. You can't deny it. Can't and why it. Orlando is so amazing in this department, I have no idea because I know there's a lot of cities around that have nothing like this. So yeah. it's interesting. Right, right. Well, folks, uh, we've had a great show today and we appreciate everyone that tuned in. Um, you know, sometimes in your own communities, whether it's here in Orlando or anywhere in the country, it takes someone like a Michael Cantone mm -hmm. to really step out of their comfort zone and, and, and actually challenge the, the status quo. And that's what we're kind of trying to do here on the yeah. front porch, Glenda. We, no, every week we bring something new and different. Who knows what next week's show is going to be about. <laughs> um, but we welcome everyone to send us emails and send us feedback and all those different things. Front Porch Chat with Randy and friends every Sunday at 11. Yay. <laughs> Randy and friends. As you know, our show airs every Sunday at 11, but that may not be convenient for everyone. So what we do is we put all the shows up on www.frontporchchat.com. So you see all of our previous shows, but you can also go take a look at our store. You can buy t-shirts, coffee mugs, uh, buttons, pins, keychains. All of that is available for sale on the website. Also, you'll get to see our new wine that's coming out this summer. It's private label wine. It's called FPC. We have a Merlot, we call it Merlot, and we have a Chardonnay called Chardonnay. -Nay. More importantly, on this section, we have a private membership only section. So for $2.99 a month, I mean, who can't afford that? You get to see everything that we're doing and you also get private information regarding other shows that other people don't get to see and coupons for various restaurants throughout the area. Front Porch Chat with Randy and Friends, every Sunday at 11. Hurry up.